Thank you, Product School, for having me over. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Harshi, like the Harshi's Chocolate from Gainset PX. Uh, and I'm super excited to talk to you all about ways product managers can use journey maps to achieve outcomes, which I'm sure a lot of you are already doing. Uh, so keep your comments, inputs, questions coming in the chat. I'd love this opportunity to learn from you all as well. Um, so here's a little bit how we're going to spend the next about 30 to 35 minutes together. Uh, let me know in the chat if this agenda sounds good or there's anything else you'd like to discuss, but a little bit starting with intros and I have a fun icebreaker for you all. I'll, I'll love to get to know you all a little bit. Uh, then we'd go into a introduction of the product-led growth fly flywheel that we've developed here at Gainsight along with user journey, importance of user journey going into driving better time to value through the product and then spending some time in understanding how can we leverage personas to drive adoption journeys at scale. And lastly, uh, touching upon a little bit of um, cross-functional team metrics, as I, as I know that's always a big topic uh, for a lot of the companies. Uh, so let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, meanwhile, here's a little bit about me. Uh, I am a post-sales leader at Gainsight PX, I manage uh, uh, our, all of our Gainsight PX uh, sort of customers book of business and uh, four functions all into me, services, support, customer success, and ops and scale or sort of center of excellence. Uh, I've been with Gainsight for about uh, three years at this point. Uh, uh, and I am also a product-led growth author, which you can download the book on the link mentioned, uh, product-led success professional handbook. It's also on Gainsight uh, website. Uh, and I am a big believer in an evangelist of PLG. Prior to this, um, I've worked with and for several Fortune 500 companies, including Facebook, Ernst & Young, and managed accounts like DHL, Adobe, Dern, Dern Bradstreet, Splunk, etc. Um, and I have worked very closely with our founder, Mickey Alon, which you guys may have heard uh, from before on product school around developing some of the product-led growth playbooks, best practices, building customer success foundations up for our product line here at Gainsight. Uh, and well, uh, that is literally my day job. Uh, I love to DJ outside of work and teach Zumba over the weekend as well. Uh, so, well, that's a little bit about me. Uh, Here's an icebreaker. I'd love to hear a little bit about you all and get to know you all better. So please put in chat and introduce yourself with your role, company, and goal for joining the session. And if you want a free vacation for a week, where would you go? Uh, I would probably go to Australia. Um, that's been on our bucket list for a while. Um, that's where I would go. Uh, so as you guys keep putting your answers in the chat, let's kick off the session here. Uh, so uh, starting with the, the product-led growth flywheel sort of we developed here at Gainsight. So on the left, you will see the traditional typical marketing funnel, which most B2B companies follow. Uh, so starting from the top, as you know, it's uh, the customer acquisition or sort of prospect acquisition starts at the marketing level uh, with marketing content or MQL, as they call the marketing qualified lead. Um, so as you can see, uh, the, the process of the previous marketing funnel is product journey really starts at the end, like almost being the outcome of acquisition, where only few selected customers get to experience the product. Uh, and the focus is more on qualifying based on marketing content, uh, uh, the right leads for sales guys, longer sales, sales cycle, uh, and very high touch leading into customers who then are able to access, very few are able to access um, product um, before they actually buy it. Now, on the other hand, if you see the PLG or the product-led growth flywheel, a lot of the companies are moving to this model where uh, we are getting access to the end users or uh, to the product early on in their life cycle, either via free trials, limited trials, or POCs. So as you can see, the product journey now has been totally reversed where the product journey starts uh, rather at the beginning of the journey of the prospect or the customer where the acquisition stage happens, they sort of try out your product. Uh, and that's what we call the PQL product qualified leads, which are more high quality leads uh, for your sales teams to kind of close on. And, and they are sort of onboarded and uh, product plays front and center role um, from the get go, which accelerates the sales cycle in the journey. Now, the key part to all of this is 
mapping your user journey, right? Uh, mapping that core features or value drivers towards desired outcomes. So um, almost think of it as different stages of your uh, users or customers. If if they are in the free trial stage, you know how how do we onboard them that initial value sort of true value and convert them into paying customers? Or if they are already paying customers. Um, what are the key goals or value drivers during the onboarding phase? Um, then taking them to a little bit of more advanced level and uh, focusing on initial value and so on and so forth. So it's critical to have that journey mapped out for your product and for your customers and users that like brings a lot of cross-functional alignment. And that will help you define the right touch points and the right omni-channel touch points um, for your customer experience onboarding and sort of journey for the users and customers. So quick question, have you mapped your customer journey for your customers at your company? Yes, no, or no, we are considering it. Would love to hear from you all, where are you uh, in that uh, phase of mapping the customer journey for your product? So going into a little bit of uh, you know, strategy, but also tactics on how how to sort of leverage this product-led growth flywheel um, to, you know, drive those journeys uh, for your end users. So, um, like, again, as you can see, product being the front and center, uh, and that's where sort of PMs um, play a very critical role today in the customer's journey, like really using that product experience at every stage of the customer journey. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to uh, touch upon the core two concepts, which are highlighted in yellow on the right. Number one, how to drive better time to value uh, through the product or leveraging the product as a vehicle. And secondly, sort of driving those adoption journeys within the product after that initial onboarding. So starting with the first one, um, the driving better time to value through the product. So I'd say the key place there uh, that we've seen work very well with uh, our customers who are doing this personally, we are doing this at Gainsight as well, is starting with mapping your personas and objectives and the aha moments for your um, end users or customers, right? For example, um, you know, at Gains like PX, we, we cater to four to five different personas. So mapping out your persona, like example, oh, engineering uh, teams use our product or product managers use our product or it's above the line or below the line, CTOs or CEOs. And then sort of mapping out objectives for each of those personas and what those aha moments look like uh, when they're initially starting to use your product. Uh, from there, sort of even measuring signups and usage is again particularly focused more on free trials. Um, so, what are the signups? What is the usage? And sort of qualifying those PQLs, product qualified lead, uh, and optimizing on organic and inorganic demand. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the next few slides. Um, onboarding them to core functionalities and using an onboarding checklist, which is sort of a bot sitting within your product. And lastly, keeping them engaged with in-app and email messaging. Again, retention is very critical in the first few days or the first week uh, when a user signs up with your product. So let's double click on each of these um, strategies on tactically how you could execute on it. Uh, this is a great data point, which I'd love to to, which I always love to share is 65% of the SaaS companies today have started to offer free trials or demos. So optimizing that user sign-up or flow is critical, uh, which means reducing uh, that sort of friction point and optimizing the landing page, but also uh, capturing their persona and objective. So if you see these two screenshots, these are actually screenshots from our Gainsight PX uh, sign up workflow, whereas the first question sort of we ask the user to ident self identify in terms of their role uh, and second identify with a multi uh, check questionnaire of, hey, what might be your desired outcomes or priorities um, from the product uh, and this sort of what this does is it feeds into our PX product or tracking mechanism where we are tracking our attributes both at the user level and at the account level. Now, you may ask that, hey, today if I implement this workflow, what about my users or customers who've signed up in the past? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping whatever tool that you guys are using, at least in Gainsight PX, we have these out of the box 
integration and collaborations where historical users can be updated uh, with their uh, account and user attributes. And some of the user and account attributes that you may want to think about tracking outside the account level, revenue, health score, uh, renewal date, um, and you know, risk in terms of green, yellow, um, uh, green, yellow, red. And then at the user level, sign up date, you know, any personas, uh, role, objectives, so on and so forth. This really helps you slice and dice the data of your product usage and analytics in a very uh, categorized and sequenced way. Uh, and also that helps you take very actionable um, steps and uh, do personalized messaging and customer engagement uh, based on those account and user attributes that we've captured. Once we've done that, creating that onboarding checklist on the left, you will see this is a screenshot from Gainsight PX. This is a sort of a what we call is a knowledge center bot uh, sits in one of the corners of the screen and uh, and is a home uh, to the key uh, articles, key in-app guides and resources that we believe are critical to the new users. And it's also sequenced in a way where we would want user to follow the sequence as they start to use the product. So you should choose a tool or a product uh, which lets, which does the heavy lifting for you of being that onboarding checklist as a one-stop shop within your application. And you can totally personalize that first mile experience uh, for your end users. So it's almost like think of it as an onboarding checklist. Um, and as I previously mentioned, once you have your journey mapped out, uh, personas and objectives mapped out. We are tracking uh, or capturing those user and account attributes uh, within within the tool that you're using. You can actually personalize or you should be personalizing by customer stage because as you might know, customers who are in onboarding versus customers who are in adoption phase, the goals might be very different. Uh, even segmentation, customers who are high-end ARR, their goals might be very different from uh, SMBs or digital-led customers. And then, of course, personas and objectives like uh, a product manager might come in to uh, look at data versus a CPO might just come in to look at uh, dashboards. So, again, uh, capturing those user and account attributes and personalizing your in-app messaging and guides or like the onboarding flow is super critical in uh, ensuring that quick time to value for your users as you're onboarding them, especially super critical in free trials and POC stages. Here are some core metrics that you should be thinking about tracking. Now, this specific example is focused on free trial and PQL. Uh, again, thinking of generating pipeline using product qualified lead. So as you can see on the left, uh, this is product qualified lead sort of widget, which is focused on. And, and just for reference, this is a screenshot that we've taken from Gainside PX. Uh, so this is a sort of a custom dashboard which you, where you can choose and put your own metrics. So tracking who are the product qualified leads, uh, what is the time to value for those users in the trial phase, as you can see at the bottom, it's a three-step workflow where the drop-off is, how many steps it takes for your users to actually complete a workflow, what is the time duration actually between completion of workflows, where is the drop-off, can we optimize it from product perspective, or can we step in and show them in-app guides to help complete those initial workflows? Um, on the top uh, middle, you can see SEO or organic and inorganic attribution. So again, uh, that attribution of your paid campaigns or search engine optimization, that's a great way for uh, your marketing teams or demand gen teams to see, okay, these are my uh, good paying ROI channels versus these with where, where relatively less. So it helps make those investment decisions. Lastly is cohort analysis. Uh, basically, retention analysis of daily user retention for trials. Um, and then on the top right you, uh, or the middle right, you'll see aha moments during the trial where you can actually compare uh, what are the features that are driving most value, quicker time to value, and your users are finding it most useful in those first five to seven days of sign up. Uh, so double clicking on that custom dashboard, the sort of the the 
dashboard that you see here, each of the widgets are actually clickable. So here's one example of path analyzer. As product teams, you probably want to identify those friction points uh, in the initial user workflow. So delving into the user journey, using path analysis, understanding the aha moments, uh, unexpected, um, you know, discoverability issues helps us optimize or uh, our product workflows or make roadmap decisions. And secondly, in the short term, we can cover up for that by showing uh, temporary in-app guides and workflows to guide your users to initial time to value. Um, again, this is a screenshot out of the box from Gainsight PX, which is called Path Analysis Report. Uh, this uh, uh, one is a screenshot of our out-of-the-box support of funnel analysis. So tracking critical milestones, this truly helps you understand the number of steps or clicks it takes your users to complete a critical workflow, the time uh, that it takes for your users to go or navigate from step one to step two, where the drop-off is. This really helps you monitor and optimize your critical value drivers or workflows in, the, in, in your application um, and track against the adoption goals uh, for your product. User retention, as I briefly uh, touched upon initially, uh, the golden standard should be uh, about north of 30% user retention week over week. Uh, particularly in free trial, you might want to track daily user retention. So the, again, this is a screenshot of out-of-the-box report from PX, which is retention report. You can really measure how well your product is retaining users week over week, which features are actually helping retain customers most and even identify some growth and successful cohorts. Uh, like growth cohorts, which are probably at risk or successful behaviors, which then can be replicated to your at-risk cohorts. Uh, so again, lots of uh, great insights to delve in here uh, and thinking about it as, okay, how can I drive time to value for my users? Thinking about it in two key buckets, looking at insights and data and driving actions out of it in terms of roadmap strategy. And secondly, short term, can we put in product guides, helps, uh, checklist to help the users complete that workflow and get to initial time to value real quick. Um, and lastly, you want to keep your users engaged, especially if they are in free trial POC mode. Uh, and initially, if you are onboarding your users, you want to make sure you're using omni-channel approach to keep them engaged. And that channel and messaging is super contextual. Um, so we can drive that contextual messaging as we discussed by identifying the persona stage objectives uh, and ensuring we're meeting the users where they are and helping them where they are getting stuck. So almost like if you look at this screenshot, it talks about starting with an email and okay, if a customer clicks on the link, what is the path? If they don't click on the link, what is the path? And uh, it follows uh, two different work, work streams or workflows from there. So keeping the users engaged is critical, especially in the first seven to 14 days to ensure we are maintaining high retention and drive them uh, to outcomes and values uh, from your product. Um, Lastly, on this topic, I would love to share this example from Adobe. Uh, Adobe is using Gainsight PX and, and they, they carried out an experiment where they had a feature discoverability challenge of a feature which was almost like tucked away six to seven steps away. Um, and they nurtured the users with contextual messaging uh, to, to help them complete that seven step workflow. And it actually uh, helped them overall produce a 300% lift uh, on completion of that workflow or that adoption of that feature. Um, so super uh, sticky uh, for them. And uh, the guides really help them drive up discoverability and adoption of that feature. Um, and uh, definitely, you know, we used segmentations and targeted a specific cohort and groups of users and put interval scopes and in write frequency and leverage hotspots so that it's less invasive, as you can see on the left screenshot. Again, these are out of the box capabilities available in Gainsight PX. I'm hoping any tool that you use to drive these end product guidances and journeys uh, also provide you these kind of features and functionalities. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned, we'd love to touch upon a little bit on driving adoption. Once we've onboarded our customers and users in the free trial phase or even in the adopt, uh, onboarding phase, 
um, taking them uh, uh, to the next level of adoption and that initial and true value. Um, so let's let's um, review some of the high level strategies that you might want to leverage here is measure the usage of the key value drivers, right? Again, using a uh, tool like PX to understand the usage and adoption of your key value features and drivers, making decisions um, or, or based on the data that you collect, either uh, roadmap decisions or you know guiding them at uh, various specific steps. Uh, then from there, increasing awareness of the advanced features with contextual guides, very similar to the example I shared with respect to Adobe, and embedding your knowledge center into the product. Like most of us in B2B companies have a documentation website which lives outside of the product, which means multiple clicks and more user fiction for our users to get help on how to. So we can bring that uh, resource, that center into the product and make it a one-stop shop, whether it's respect to providing feedback or getting help or looking at various knowledge resources that your company might be offering. Uh, we're already you know, reducing that time to value and friction for the users. So let's double click on a couple of tactics to execute some of these strategies that I'm sharing here. Uh, journey mapping, I, I shared this a few slides ago, but again, want to re-emphasize on, especially when we are trying to drive adoption, uh, how important and critical it is to have your journey mapped out for your product and differentiated by various personas, uh, because you might have five personas and the journey for all five personas may look very different uh, in your product. So it's critical to have this journey mapped out and have it differentiated between onboarding versus initial value versus true value and that sort of drives to uh, advocacy renewal and expansion and this is this is an example that we've taken um that the journey that we mapped at gainsight px for our uh, customers uh core metrics want to want to start out by sharing uh the key metrics that you know you should be thinking about uh, tracking and measuring in terms of adoption phase of your customers. So on the left, as you can see, what are, what are, what, what are my key value drivers? How is it trending? What is the adoption? What is the sentiment of the customers, uh, right? Like based on NPS feedback or specific surveys that we may be running into, uh, running, uh, into the product to get their initial feedback. I'll touch upon that a little bit more in my next few slides. What is the frequency uh, that my accounts are logging in? Is it like, uh, what, what, what is the trend? Uh, what is the daily active monthly users? So almost like think of it as the depth. Uh, and then lastly, habit or stickiness, which is the breadth of adoption as well. Right. So kind of uh, treating this as a dashboard, which you probably review every day and see for anomalies. And then... Uh, from there, sort of double clicking into these widgets to understand deeper insights uh, from these reports. So uh, one thing to look at or start out with is golden features or your sticky features, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tracking uh, the trends and adoption of your value drivers and golden features. Uh, what is bringing your users back to the product? Which which features are increasing stickiness? Uh, and, you know, investing in that governance and integration of those features and uh, uh, discoverability. So that that's very critical uh, when you're thinking of uh, tracking adoption and value drivers of your of your product. Secondly, I would say is breadth of adoption to drive success plays, right? So sort of golden feature that we just spoke about or value drivers directly come into this concept. This is a screenshot from our health score, which we use in our Gainsight CS platform. Uh, and this is an example actually of how we are tracking the health score of our customers, breadth of adoption of how they're using PX, right? So there's depth of adoption, which is the frequency or like your MAUs or DAUs. And then breadth is how well they are using your product with respect to specifically key value drivers or golden features of your product. And this helps you inform your customer success teams or your customer facing teams to see, hey, these product, these features are adopt adopt adopted well. These features aren't. So here's where the CS teams need to double click or double down on in their next monthly syncs. And a great data point for product teams to see trends or where there are overall adoption issues and kind of double clicking into that and seeing what optimization workflows that may need to go into your product. 
from there once we've understood uh, the adoption of our key value drivers overall health score you know uh, taking this play into activating those features again sharing that example of adobe where we discovered hey this feature which is seven clicks away uh, this is actually a key value driver but has discoverability issue so then taking advantage of tool like px where you're using in app guides and walkthroughs to promote that features contextually to your end users increasing the dis uh, discoverability and nurturing your users on uh, how best it uh, addresses their pain points and drives value for them uh, these are you know again in app guidances um, screenshots which our customers have used um, px to drive with respect to feature activation uh, contextual user research, think of it as in-app responses or, or a mechanism to capture your user sentiment and feedback. Uh, there are a ton uh, of surveys that you could do. So I would say start with identifying what your goal and objective is. Uh, in this particular case, it could, it is, uh, the example that I've taken is, is uh, for a product team who wants to understand uh, overall, you know, is doing user research and wants to understand what are, where are my users sitting with the product's key value drivers, right? So we have an opinion or start, start with a hypothesis based on the data that we have that, hey, here are my four or five key value drivers, but let me research uh, my users. Let me ask my users. Uh, how do they feel about it and where, what's their scoring, uh, understanding what do they value most and even leaving some open text questions to learn from your customers. Um, so it could be as simple as what you're seeing on the right, which is a simple rating, or it could be a, a little bit more um, detailed and robust uh, based on the screenshot that you see on the left. Now, the, the product benchmark in for in-product surveys is about 30% response rate that we typically see with Gainsight PX and about 19% on open text questions where you can capture additional user insights. If you And if you just compare that to sheer email response rates for surveys, that's about 2 to 3%. Um, so I'd say uh, this is quite a low effort and great ROI investment if you're using any such tool or mechanism uh, to capture feedback and sentiment from your end users. Communicating releases and outcomes, like we've spoken about understanding adoption value from our key features, capturing user sentiment, but also communicating release and outcomes in that adoption phase to your advanced users is so critical uh, because I, the product teams are so much invested in uh, ensuring that that product is adding new features and value values to the end users. So promoting that is, is super critical. And... <clears throat> excuse me, sharing the outcomes with your internal teams is also super critical. So when you think of release, um, so far, traditionally, everybody uses emails, uh, release updates or announcements to, uh, you know, expose the users to the new release updates. But as you know, uh, so almost the open rate for emails or response rates are about 2 to 3%. So using those in-app announcements, which takes about 30 seconds, for your users to go over the highlights of your releases uh, and then sort of uh, for them to double click on from there wherever they need help is again low low effort and high ROI I would say from what we are see seeing with our customers and uh, ourselves as well and lastly um, scaling your support and education or training teammates um, you can use uh, these in-app product tours and guides and, and knowledge center board to promote educational uh, videos, uh, one to many upcoming webinars or office hours or enablement events, uh, best practices, strategies. So again, great way for your <clears throat> cross-functional teams to scale uh, and enable your, your end users. All right, lastly, uh, cross-functional alignment and business metrics we've spoken about driving time to value we've spoken about driving adoption journeys but um, tracking success and measuring success and kpis are critical right so if you think in terms of the product-led growth journey of your customers these are the key milestones acquisition adoption retention expansion advocacy <clears throat> and as you can see in the bottom the key teams who are involved, our sales team, 
uh, customer success team post acquisition but you may see the last line which talks about product team which is now more heavily involved from the get go from the acquisition phase to ensure we are leveraging the product experience to drive that time to value from the get go and drive those pqls leading to paid customers um not going to go into the details of the milestones on top but feel free to review this from the uh from the slide of what are the key milestones across across each of these uh stages during the customer life cycle um so sort of mapping back to the key kpis for these key uh stages in a customer life cycle as you can see in acquisition um earlier it used to be mql and sql but now with product being front and center and getting access and reducing friction to your end users early on pql is a great uh metric to track pipeline generated um conversion rate customer acquisition cost these are again great metrics to sort of track and align uh typically uh uh marketing and sales teams would be uh driving or be responsible with it for it with product teams sort of co-owning the pql pieces then from there going the adoption phase where well, as i mentioned want to track the depth and breadth of adoption and the adoption of key value drivers and trends there and then from there going into the retention which is typically owned by customer success but again product being the front and center to drive most of these uh retention is big for any b2b company grr nrr verified outcomes and uh, csat and lastly expansion which is again jointly owned by csm sales team but more increasingly product teams are participating in this to drive those nrr expansion cross sell dollars uh, and uh, any new uh, bookings so hope this was helpful and before we go into q and a would love for you guys to tell me what kpis are you measuring today conversion rate user engagement adoption pql grr time to value ndr um that's all from my end thanks for attending if you uh, are interested in learning more about it download uh, our uh, you know multiple playbooks that we have you know plg growth led index professional handbook so on and so forth we have pulse for product which is coming up live in san francisco on the 17 to 18 lots of great speakers and lots of tactical hands on and strategic sessions um so would love to see see you all there um here are links to those specific events and i am open to any questions that you may have and answer them thanks for listening in